Boom. WNBC. Fuck it. We do it live. We do, do it live. Because you know that reference, right? Bill O'Reilly. You ever see that shit? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. When Bill O'Reilly gets pissed off. Yeah. Fuck, do it live. We're doing live. Yeah. <laughs> Even though right. we're not live. We are here with Jihadi John straight from Fire Festival. <laughs> Fuck you. Yeah. I figured I'd start the interview just like this. <laughs> <laughs> we're here with Ryan Jackson. Friend of the yeah. show, um, screenwriter, podcast guest extraordinaire, clubhouse superstar, <laughs> <laughs> Ryan Jackson. What's up, dude? What's up, man? How you been? Good, man. Good. Just, uh, yeah, just doing, uh, watching movies like Chameleon Street, and uh, which I love, and just uh, trying to write scripts and yeah that how's that going <laughs> COVID uh, interfering with you at all at this point i'm just used to it i mean i think everybody right. is at this point it's just kind of like become the new way of life so i'm not like uh yeah. I mean, there's still some people raging against it who will refuse to ever be used to it but yeah i'm like yeah i'm just I've, it's gotten to the point where it's just like i don't even really think about it i just do all the stuff that i'm supposed to you right. know what i mean I just wear I've been my mask. that way for like six months. Yeah, I just I wear my mask. I well, I, I what do you call it? I uh, wash my hands. I use hand sanitizer. I try to social distance. I mean, everything out here is basically open back up. So I mean, yeah, it's kind of it's kind of wild. It's kind of it's kind of wild. So yeah. <laughs> well, it's this funny how other you know COVID colds and colds and the flu and stuff have dropped because everyone's washing their hands and wearing masks thanks to covid so it's like we should have been doing this all along anyway maybe right right at least the hand washing and shit you know and you know that handshaking i always thought was like you know just come on man people are like scratching their balls and then you're shaking hands and stuff you know (laughs) chris been calling for the bow for years yeah the japanese bow man it's perfect respectful just yeah (laughs) are are this yeah Yeah. some bash brothers shit get your conseco mcguire on the yeah. Lonely Island. Yeah, man, it's fucking weird out there. All right, so I asked you what your favorite movie was months ago. Right. You said Chameleon Street then, but we all know it's subject to change. Is it still the case after watching it again recently? Or Yes, it's still it's still right. there. That's good to hear. Yeah. yeah. thought you'd be coming in like, no, it's Throw Mama from the Train or some shit now. Like, damn. No, no, no. I got a rotating top. 15 probably but not nah, but this is this is this is still number one right we can talk about some of them too as well but uh yeah <laughs> now this chameleon street i had heard of never seen but you don't hear about it much either no you don't um which is crazy when you really think about it i mean this is a movie that you know won the the grand jury prize at sundance mm-hmm. in 1990 right I think it was the same year as uh sex lies and videotape actually mm. um and it was supposed to like mm. kick kick off you know and jumpstart the the career of wendell b harris jr who's mm-hmm. the writer director and star right yeah badass yeah um, crushed it dude yeah Ridiculous. it sounds it like go he, that way. and he yeah well he he was saying it he considered it to be suppressed you know like i, I watched an interview with him that was somewhat recent i think um and he said he took it to Hollywood and they immediately bought the remake rights and they were thinking about making it with like Will Smith, Smith. or, you know, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Arsenio yeah. Hall or whoever at the time. And he's <laughs> like, man, like, why not just distribute this film? You know, but no, they were like instantly interested in remaking it probably partially because of, you know, the, the way it was shot and stuff. They wanted to make something more mainstream and palatable or whatever. what they Fuck think that. would be pal Exactly. Which is bullshit. I agree. It's like, this it's, is exactly what Chris and I are always talking about. I want to see the lo-fi version that's straight from somebody's brain. Yeah, the all. I don't want to man. see this thing that's been filtered and to the point where now it looks great, but it's not yeah, it like this dude's direct that. singular vision anymore. Yeah. You know? it loses all the charm that it has. Yeah. Totally. You know what I'm saying? And like, this has tons. Of, yeah. yeah, this has tons of charm. <laughs> it's fucking amazing. And the, and the crazy thing is, this is like based on Douglas Street was a real guy. Um, right. Yeah. 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 A fucking con man from. Yeah. Detroit. Why don't you tell people Russia. just give yeah. like a log line of it if you want. I mean, so it's basically uh, it's a movie about this guy uh, Douglas Street, who um, was a con man and impersonated all different types. Uh, an ex- he was an extortionist. 
Uh, he, he impersonated pro, uh, professional uh, professional athletes, doctors, fucking uh, lawyers, <laughs> reporters, reporters. Yes. Like, um, and, and, and did this sick and fooled a lot of people in real life. What? In fact, they said he when he was impersonating a doctor, apparently he performed 36 successful hysterectomies, which is yeah. fucking insane. insane. <laughs> I, I can't even uh, imagine doing that if I were properly trained to do it, much less like he did. Or just, that is like a audacious. Cookbook. He read the yeah, sure. and it said, cut yeah. here, cut here, do this, right. pull this out. And it's I get not, that. You know. that it's, I get that it's probably a lot more simple than you, you don't need to go to for eight years of medical school to be able to pull it off. But um, I'm just saying the idea of even like, Yes, cutting someone open with a scalpel if the you're not balls, like sanctioned dude. to do so, man. The audacity, wild, wow. Yeah, and well, I think part of what they train train for too is the contingency. Like, what if something went wrong? And right, some body went south and shit, and flatlined. And see, like, uh, you know. What do you know? It's mm. it's kind of funny because he's like, a, it's really an American. I think like Douglas Street was like, he's like, he's the American story, like especially now. Especially, you know, fake it till you make it, guy. You know what right. I mean? Right. Like, I was that phrase came to mind too. I was yeah, going to say. Fake it till it, you yeah. make it to like the the, the to like the highest degree. Totally. You know, he's like he's like the people you totally. encounter on Clubhouse. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> well, and the point, like at the, by the end, that he's ascended to Congress and shit, and it's like, let me stop, take a sidelong look at these motherfuckers in Congress, and wonder how many of them faked it. So they made it. That's all any of right. them do. They're That's all a bunch of much jackasses. Yeah, most dude. people do, yeah. And again, it's like he was he just kind of exposed, you know, the the again the idea of uh, American exceptionalism or the meritocracy. Yet another person who kind of shatters that whole mm -hmm. you know, that whole mythology that we like to get sold or we've been sold as Americans, you know, like just the upward mobility, American yeah, dream. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, obviously, you know. Trump did that during his four years, and that's just one of the reasons that why he drove, you know, uh, elites so fucking crazy, regardless of whether they're, you mm -hmm. know, what side of the aisle they were on. They just were like, you know, he drove them crazy because he's just a he was a shining example of that. Where it's like, mm -hmm. this is this dude didn't rise because he was fucking, <laughs> he was brilliant. He became the no. most powerful man in America, pretty much just being a fucking. <laughs> almost like a, because he wasn't brilliant right just, right uh, you yeah. know what i mean like and it's like guys like <laughs> yeah that was part of the like, appeal <laughs> yeah right. guys like douglas street you know what i mean they they expose you know america for the lie that it is you know what i mean and like i feel like in that's fact uh, go ahead in fact the character in this said i could play president by the end yeah. <laughs> he started right, i right, love that right. said i could play president which is very similar to what we're talking about he's very obama like too his voice his yeah. diction is yeah you know. exactly and obama again like there's many who would say obama is nothing but a shell like yeah, you know ladder I mean? climber. Like yeah. yeah ladder climber after you know what i mean like so it's like mm -hmm. it's, it's, this movie is so like, now they're uh, in hollywood making movies and shit yeah yeah this movie <laughs> is so it's like funny it's like so like of the moment even though it's like not it very much is still relevant like probably even more now yeah it, it just shows you how much shit don't change really it's always uh, the yeah. same you know yeah. like yeah. And he was more dangerous to the status quo because here is a intelligent black man high school who's ambitious and shit you know right, like right. A, a trump was able, to, was able to walk onto yale's campus and pretend yes to be a fucking med student, I love it. first year med student. And Chris and I are on record is loving movies about liars lying, Shattered Glass, The Hoax, yeah. that kind of shit. I love a movie like where a dude- Catch me if you can. Catch me if you can. Catch me if you, yeah. can. you just gotta keep yeah. telling a bigger lie and a bigger lie and shit, lie it's great. Lie after lie after lie after lie. Yeah. It's the best It reminded shit, me really. a bit of um, Factotum to Bukowski, uh, yes. only in the sense of like working all these different jobs and stuff, but mm -hmm. you know, different in the respect of him doing the con game and everything. I wonder if the yeah. voiceover has come a little bit like if that's some of the shit Hollywood wanted to remake it, probably the voiceover, maybe they would have got rid of, or mm -hmm. who knows, which maybe is some not. of the best I mean, shit in it. It was poetic, man, at points. I could. Yeah. I, I was having a conversation with some, uh, a younger, a younger guy. He wants to make movies and he was, he was, you know, railing about like voiceovers a crutch. And I'm like, I hate when like, people say that shit. Depends how they use it. You heard someone say that. You heard someone say that. And you're right. It can be, but it's like, I can show you numerous examples where voiceover is, is yeah. in fact great. This being one of Definitely. them, you know what I mean? Yes. Um, well, it's, it's play by play versus color. 
play-by-play voiceover is trash. Exactly. You're showing me already. You don't need to tell me. But when it's right. color, it's great. Mm-hmm. Right. You don't want to so watch. Many, like, just, there's so many just like little fucking like great moments in this movie too. Because like I could see someone like in terms of like humor, like I could see someone like making this movie and trying to do the serious version of this. And not to say this isn't a serious film, but like it is so it has such a lightheartedness to it, right? Right. Like yeah. it's it's comedic, you know what I mean? And like um it just sells it in a way, it makes it so much more like again, that charm. It's just so much more it's almost like, like a movie. fable in that way. Right. Like a, right. Like a weird subversive it, I, fable. The first time I watched it, I didn't know that, that this was a real guy. You know what I mean? Like even when even when it opens <clears> with that, you know, I still was like, that doesn't How'd you get me. turned on to it? Had you just read that it won Sundance or was somebody like, You gotta see this shit? Do you remember the first um, time you saw it or the anything? The first time I saw it, uh uh somebody was i was listening to a podcast i think it was a couple years back and it got brought up it was a podcast just about films in general like films Mm -hmm. that don't get seen like and it was the the subject was actually like black films that are like undervalued or undersaw and it got brought up and they were talking about yeah chameleon street and i was like well let me check this movie out and then the moment i checked it out i was like yo it's an intriguing like, title. Yeah, there's so yeah. many of them. You know what it made me think of too, and it's funny because that got all the mainstream cred. Of course, mm-hmm. probably came out around the same time. I think Zelig was a couple years ahead of this, mm-hmm. but I know yeah, this, this was. Made me think of that. Yeah. Where, yeah, it's very much yeah. like Zelig, you know. Yeah. But Zelig just except, being except Woody was putting himself in archival footage, like you know exactly. Yeah. He was, he was but he had that budget. You know, right. he had the. They right. did it before Gump. Like that yeah, created the technology it, for yeah. Gump. So Zillig is well, Forrest Gump is doing the Zillig thing. Exactly. Yes. exactly. More correct, yeah. you know what right. I mean? But like, but, but for yeah, folks who don't know Zelig, like yeah. Zelig is like this hyperbol- hyperbolic mm-hmm. take on that chameleon syndrome where a, a people pleaser, someone who wants to please people so much to the extent that he morphs into whatever they are. Woody He's Allen. hanging out with black folks. He turns black and shit. Yeah. Zelda, yeah, yeah the Woody yeah. Allen version. Um, but there's this, a lot, there's this a is lot more of a societal class version of that. Yeah. 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 That's like, there's like class shit, but there's a line when he's talking to his therapist or whatever. Um, or I guess it's, you know, when he's like, they cut back to him and he's like sitting there talking and he's caught, he's, he's saying like, he's trying to like basically diagnose what his problem is Mm -hmm. and like what I actually wrote it down because I would never remember it, which is like, he says, when, when I meet somebody, I know within the first two minutes who they, what, who they want me to be. And Mm -hmm. I just cut the emotional cloth of my personality to fit the emotional clothing of whoever I'm conning basically. Like, it's like, and it's just like a, such a perfect like distillation of like who Douglas street like is. And all con men really, that's what all great salesmen do and con Mm -hmm. men do, you know? instinctually but uh right right i I, I just like kind of like um i just like that like this is a type of film that like um it it just presents like this guy and just in a real in a very like natural way like he's not like playing it up like yeah he's playing it up in terms of like um when he's pretending to be other people right you know what i mean like when he's a doctor he's like well yes you know like when he's in the role he is but like so he was like oh. bitch at that chick who screamed in the stethoscope <laughs> and shit <laughs> <laughs> that Woman, what good. the hell <laughs> but, but he's just like like not a very like it's just like it's not the it's not the type of film you would see uh in terms of like um it's not the type of typical portrayal of like a a, a what you would what you would people would call like a black film you know what i mean like it's not like the typical portrayal it's not urban street shit it's It's not you know it's it's like a more nuanced sort of take you know what i mean it's like oh this is just more of a guy like he's not like he's not like selling the tropiness of like you know like what the you know what i mean so like and that's Mm -hmm. another aspect of this film that i really appreciate just well dude it's it's funny to talk about will smith playing him like the whole Mm -hmm. rubik's cube shit Oh, yeah. The pursuit of happiness <laughs> yeah. or whatever that apparently came from a true story too, but who knows if that dude had seen Chameleon Street and did the Rubik's Cube to get I into the business Douglas world. Really, I wonder if Douglas Street really could do the Rubik's Cube that fast. Yeah, I don't know. That's a good question. It Maybe, but it could have been a I mean, it's a of, trick. I mean, it's a trick. I know people that figured it oh, out yeah. and do it really fast. But like maybe he maybe he could maybe that just I just peel the stickers me. off. Right, right. Just right. Peel the stickers off and put them all back. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> But yeah, um, like uh, they just carry one in your pocket that's soft and work some sleight of hand. <laughs> Bam! I got it. Um, yeah. There's something about 
like you said, it's not at all dealing with those urban tropes. It's not a street thing. It's not coming but even from though, poverty. Like, his family was even middle class. His family was just working class. Like, yes, like yeah. fucking his dad owned a, like a fucking, what was it? Burglary like, alarm. A burglary yeah. alarm repair shit. He worked for him. And then like, mm-hmm. then you see the scene of like, the, it's like the, uh, the, what do you call it? What's the name of the lounge they hung out in? Like him trio and his, lounge. the trio lounge or whatever. And they're just like, it's just some like dive and they're like in there, just kind of like trying yeah, to. That's a Milwaukee out. bar, dude. Just some ugly <laughs> ass stuck between two <laughs> like houses. Those shit. bars they got over yes. here, like over at this way too. But it's like they're in there, just trying to figure ways to get money. You know what I mean? Yes. Just like bad. Those are some of my favorite people. scenes. Are those dudes sitting yeah. around plotting just shit? Sitting around plotting shit. Yeah. 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 Because I went in blind. I went in. I went in blind too, not knowing what it was about. And uh, you know, when I saw those first few scenes i thought that would pretty much be the movie that it's going to be i knew that it was something to do with him assuming different roles and stuff but i thought it would be um kind of more at that stay at that level you know and just be him just trying to get into these like working class jobs or whatever more like fact totem i guess like bukowski's mm-hmm. no nah, but he just totem. climbs but, but yeah then as i watched it i was like this is, and then <laughs> then i looked it up and saw it was a real guy who did the 36 hysterectomies and shit like damn <laughs> All right. He's like fucking. He escapes from prison and goes straight to Yale. Yeah, <laughs> uh, uh, which is appropriate. A lawyer, you know. Right, right, right. They're exactly. all crooks, right? <laughs> well, that was a great scene. I was getting at when he was in the prison, and this is kind of putting that flag down that this isn't one of those movies or tropes of everyone who's undereducated and everything. How he says, yes. uh, "That guy's like, you read all them books, man." He's like, "Yes." You want to know the real kicker? I understand them. <laughs> Like, damn. So he was just like, not at all playing that trope game, which I wonder if Hollywood were to remake it, if they would have made him more lower class or something and some rags. I mean, I feel shit, like if know? Will Smith would have done the role because he was attached to do it, like he would have, Will would have hammed it up at, to a degree. You know what I mean? He would have done the Fresh mm-hmm. Princey kind of kind of performance. Yeah. You know what I mean? Maybe. Like, I mean, I, Ali and shit, he was pretty respectful. And That's true. I don't know. I don't know, Maybe. but then I look at films like Hitch, and I'm like, eh, I don't know. <laughs> there's like two Will Smiths, though. There's that romantic yeah. comedy Will Smith, and then there's, you know, concussion. But I could, I could actually see Will Smith in this, and it would be cool yeah. if he would have done it. I mean, obviously, there's no need. I think he could do it. I think he's the guy to do it, probably, yeah, if they did obviously, it. Yeah, obviously, they should have just released the original Yeah, film. the other ones he mentioned but, were... Uh, the other ones he mentioned were Arsenio Hall and Sinbad. <laughs> other than that's the Hollywood <laughs> side, where what yeah. black dude's hot right now? It's like, no, fuck off. Jamie <laughs> Foxx, of course. <laughs> uh, well, there's a ton of great black actors who could crush it, but uh, for sure, yeah, Will Smith just has mentioned. that chameleonic thing. Will Smith yeah. can fit in with this yeah. crowd and that crowd and shit. You know, mm-hmm. same with Jamie Foxx again. I mean, all these actors mm-hmm. are chameleons to a degree, but yeah. But yeah, again, this this film is perfect, man. I don't think they should remake it. It's just why not just distribute this? It was awesome, you know. Yeah, and it's like there's so many like little funny moments, like like um when he's in the fucking library, the Yale library, and they're like yes. like scanning the people, yeah. and he's like looking at and he sees the guy with the like the, the blank mic- drama mask on reading. Yeah, he's like, well, who's Jason-, Jason goes to <laughs> yeah. Yale, which yeah, is funny because like, well, um. <laughs> Because Che and I just did a uh, my favorite movie with a, a person whose pick was uh, Michael Beers. His pick was Halloween, mm-hmm. and so I watched these back to back. I had just watched you know <laughs> Halloween and then watched this, and it was a Halloween. It looked like the Mike Myers mask, but he called him Jason, which I thought was funny too. You know, <laughs> yeah, but, uh, yeah, yeah. That that scene in particular stood out to me too because I thought about actually you know making the film and how they had whatever it was like you know 25 30 students they're each in their own different position doing like reading different books and with their own vibe and stuff like that and you know it's kind of interesting to think of that all coming together that they had all these people show up on a set and okay you you you, you sit this way you sit that mm-hmm. way or maybe he just said just sit that out, dance you know, party too everybody. like he went big with some of these scenes yeah and of course yeah. A, prison. Yeah, yeah. a bigger yeah, production yeah. than you might think do you know what the budget was any chance I, I, I don't know. I don't know what the budget was, but like that John Cocteau beast mask that he yes. had on, like mm-hmm. from the fucking Cocteau, like, Amazing. like which is even in he Cold goes my to face, watch baby. Right. He references yeah, but that, it. Yeah, that mask yeah. is so fucking yes. like, that's a dope ass mask. Yeah, yeah. 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 If that thing didn't win, I would have been pissed. Everybody else <laughs> yeah. just in their weak ass Mary Antoinette looking mask and um yeah he's pretending to be french and just like fucking he's just like yeah, yeah there's just so many like little bro great little do you know that chick who played his wife gabrielle <laughs> yeah. beautiful ass what's yeah, her name babe. leslie something yeah she's a cosby girl 
She smoked really? the Bill's Cosby drugged and shit, dude. Oh, damn. Oh, damn. I was looking her up yesterday. She said, I thought you meant from the show at first. Now no, I thought she no. was a uh, Yeah. Because sure. she was only in these two movies. She was like a model. And yeah, then it... she was in this and something else around 87, 88. They were making this. 89, she met Bill Cosby and went to his room and he was going to talk to her about acting and all this. And then he was trying to kick her out. What I read was weird. It had like two things that said that he k- kicked her out because she wouldn't take his drinks. <laughs> ah, but smart, then, then there's another part, though, where she <laughs> said that he took his dick out and put her hand on it and then jerked himself off with her hand. Holy shit, that's <laughs> raisin. Cosby. <laughs> you can't find a beautiful black woman in the 80s that Cosby didn't try and get to, dude. Right, right. Creep. Ugh. It was a, it was a fucking like again like I just always 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 had like kind of a weird kind of uh mm-hmm. you know um I kind of had a, a I don't know if you want to call it like I always had a weird sort of like opinion of Bill Cosby anyways before that shit came out because I always felt like you know I felt like he was very hypocritical just oh yeah. Him. Just the Eddie like, Murphy. Yeah. Oh shit. yeah, calling yeah, out yeah, people. Would, what? Yeah. yeah, he was the way he would call right. out people. But then you'd see him and she, like, I'm like, dude, what are you talking about? Like, weren't you in, like, especially fucking, knowing what we know now? Yeah, Uptown Saturday Night and like doing movies and shit. Like, and I'm like looking at him like, like you know, like okay, just and then to find out like all that shit, it's just like, yeah, it's man. always the case. Anyone yeah, who's yeah. overcompensating and social virtue signaling and anti homophobe is a gay dude closeted. It's always some, some, the case. Some people, I'm like, yo, it's like, it's like, for example, like, you know, like, like, uh, what's this? Josh Whedon, right? Right. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> like, I'm like, people are like, I know some people that are like, dude, I can't believe. I'm like, first of all, like, I've always thought Josh Whedon was a piece of shit. Like, I didn't He's even. He's that typical <laughs> Jamie Kilstein white knight, like, dude. I didn't, even, who, have the, I didn't yeah. even have the evidence to back it up. I was just like, I just. It's a like, vibe, yeah. No, yeah, you I'm know like, that guy. Just, right. Mm-hmm. I'm like, I just always thought he was a piece of shit. Like, I, I always thought it was weird. The guys that looked up to him always were like, why the fuck do you look up to this guy? Like, uh, you know what I mean? And so, just knowing human nature. Mm-hmm. Right, Not to say right. a guy can't be a decent guy, but the drama club geek gets this power, and then he's got all these Eliza Dushkus or whatever the fuck her name is, and all these chick court <laughs> charisma carpenters yeah. around him and shit. Of course, he's yeah. gonna right, right, like in any start other scenario, acting. Like, you know, these type of women would never be around that guy. Like, you know right. what I mean? So it's just kind of exactly. Him, like, yeah, 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 yeah. It's yeah. like the nerd is revered. Yeah. Yet now he can't access any of the spoils of whatever he created and shit that's how he was looking at it i'm sure you know um, and that guy that guy that played fucking um cyborg he like fucking got black ray ball. fisher dude yeah ray fisher and he was like he like literally was like hey because he didn't really know you know he was at a point in his career where he didn't like he just didn't know that like that was cool to do <laughs> like he didn't kind of realize like at that point in time like when he called he was just like because he didn't really he didn't have a lot of experience in terms of like, you know, he wasn't really a big actor, you know, like in fact, Justice League was kind of his, his big, you know, shot, right? Yeah, I remember I was like, who? Right, right. so who? this guy's like, this is I'm a guy. I'm still who's saying who? Really, yeah, this is a guy who's not really familiar with, you know, you know, how it works. And like, he was like, he saw him being an asshole and he said some shit, right? Like, no, well, I'm going to go fucking tell on him. And it, he got, he paid the price for it. Even though now, mm-hmm. like, Everyone's mm-hmm. like, yeah, he's right, but he's still blackballed. Like, you know, he's still his career still fucked. You know what I mean? Um, I mean, yeah. now with this coming out, it probably won't be. But yeah, well, what happened? Like Nate Parker. Nate Parker had this. Show. I love Nate Parker, by the way. I like him as an actor and everything. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, you can say what you want about his filmmaking or whatever, but fuck it, he's making the movies he wants to make and finding a way to do it, even after. Yeah, sort course. of being canceled and shit. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I support Nate Parker for the most part. Like, you know, like I, I don't know what he him. did. I don't right. know. I, don't, I, I, I watched American Skin. You know, I bought it. I still need to it. see it, but uh, um, it's not like perfect or anything like that. But yeah, you know, but what do you expect? But I grade, like I said, I grade it on a curve because I understand how much like Nate Parker is legitimately an independent filmmaker. Exactly. You know I mean? Like regardless of if, even if he gets Spike Lee to come in and like co-sign it or whatever, he's still doing this. He's raising the money, shooting it, directing it, starring in it. Exactly. Like you know what I mean. He's doing like even even Birth of a Nation, which is like the fact that he had the gall to tell him that a Nat Turner movie right. one, but then two, uh-huh. like to try and do a period movie with the budget that he had. He was like, right. you know, it's like, of course it's not like, but look, he was doing a. Look what he hey man, doing. I don't begrudge you know anyone I mean? ambition and shit. Yeah. Like it's yeah. like if, if you tried to tell a story that was 
took a bigger swing than you could muster or something, I ain't mad at you. Like you took a big ass swing or right. whatever, you know, maybe you whiffed a bit, whatever. You foul tip that shit. You took the swing. You got so up I there. Changed, so this, this is definitely my, still my number one, but I changed my, for my favorites on my letterbox. Cause I changed them in and out. Like you know, four, your four favorite films on your fucking letterbox. So right now I've got chameleon street, Mm-hmm. Uh, Hollywood Shuffle, which I wanted uh, to talk about as well as another self financed yeah. like yeah. Uh, Mickey and Nikki, uh, <laughs> uh, Mikey. Sorry, I said my, my Mickey. Mikey yeah, and Nikki. Yeah. Uh, you were talking uh, about Mickey and uh, what's her face from? Uh, yeah, yeah. I just like or, that it rhymes. Mikey yeah. and Nikki, obviously the lame. Cassavetes and yeah, Peter, uh, uh, Peter Paul. Yeah, Peter uh, Paul. Uh, and Under the Skin. Like yeah. Yeah, oh, nice. <laughs> yeah. So, but right now those are my four. My four. Dude, Glazer. what's his name that made Under the Skin? Glazer. Jonathan Glazer. Glazer. Three movies, dude. Three fucking great films. Back Sexy back. Beast, Birth, Sexy and that Beast, shit? Birth. That's baller, dude. Yeah, yeah. I don't mind like, having only three movies on my resume, and they're these three wildly different, all badass, fucking crazy, cool totally. movies. Yeah. Birth is yeah. nuts. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Glazer's underrated, underrated. But, like, yeah, yeah like... Uh, but I love this fucking movie. These are the type. This is the type of shit that I like. Like this is the type of movies that like excite me. Like I don't really get excited too much by like the the big spectacle shit. And I watch all that shit. You Part know? of the Hollywood problem, like Chris was talking about that scene in the library, it's just a bit, like a funny bit. Like maybe one day he was in the library in college and he saw some dude in a mask and it was funny mm-hmm. to him. And he's like, I'm gonna work it in this movie because it's a personal right. thing or something, and it's kind of an inside joke. And then it is a funny, cool bit. But Hollywood yeah. would say there's no room for that. That's not right. telling the story. Cut it out and shit. You get noted so on I, it or whatever. If I was ever to, if I was ever in a position to do a Friday the Thirteenth movie, Jason goes to Yale would definitely be uh, where Jason literally yeah. just. <laughs> That's actually a great theater. title. Jason yeah. goes yeah, to yeah, Yale. Yeah, you know, it makes love, it sound like he's going to college and shit. Dude, yes. some, <laughs> and it's perfect because there's sororities and all that shit there. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, some yeah. Halloween party, frat party, yeah. just wreck That's shop great. at. Yeah, Ted Bundy's his wife That's my, pitch. That's my pitch for a Friday the Thirteenth. I love it. <laughs> Harvard Jason works as well. Yeah, yeah. Because it's like I just you know I fucked the Ivy League to begin with, but right. but yeah, it's just a perfect yeah perfect. Title. He kills the skull and bones dudes in the end. That's yeah, the finale. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or they brought him back to life. They by brought him back to life. All right. <laughs> on that same path, it's the skull and bones yeah. that literally ends up summoning Jason and bringing him to the fucking yeah yeah yeah. Dude, let's just write this shit and stick it on the yeah, internet. They're, they're doing this charge. ritual, this Illuminati fucking <laughs> well, Bohemian Grove it's, ritual. It's, well, it's, it's on YouTube. We'll, we'll, we'll be on YouTube for posterity purposes. So when someone rips it off, they'll know oh, yeah. it was created here right. first. <laughs> yeah, that's a beauty you can. You throw in right. some uh, goats with a little nod to Revenge of the Nerds and shit. <laughs> the frat <Yes>. party. <laughs> rubbers. What do we need rubbers for? <laughs> 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 yeah, exactly. <laughs> Man, yeah. so what the fuck happened with Wendell B. Harris Jr.? He just... It was one... Was he uh, too uh, uppity or some shit? Like, I mean, what's, yeah, what was yeah, Hollywood's yeah. excuse for never fucking with him? Yeah, you talk about a guy making three films, he just made this one, right? Yeah, like you said, Soderbergh. He was an actor in a couple other things I saw. Yeah, Soderbergh what. was in that same fucking... You know, he can't... That's the Soderbergh... Soderbergh catapulted man. out of that same out Sundance. Of that, out of that same Sundance. Wow. Right? Sex, wow. lives, and video thing. Boom. Like, the t- career trajectory is complete opposite. One was now, like skyrocket, the other one straight down. Like, Soderbergh's movie was much more conventional and James sure. Spader and Andy McDowell he had like movie stars in it and shit mm-hmm. so it was already that he was halfway there you could say um but I don't know you know I don't know if the race cards the thing to play immediately but it's just like you gotta wonder did he end up going on the water bottle tour and shit like I want to get this dude on the podcast sometime like what the fuck happened you know did you just not want to yeah. keep making movies or yeah like he got so turned off from this experience he just threw in the towel Which I hear <laughs> yeah. I mean sucks. look at look at you know I know how, didn't I what is it top of the heap look at that film top of the heap like top of the heap is the weirdest film ever you know it's like the ninth configuration meets a, 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 a movie about a black cop it's just the weirdest movie. Like, what is Top of the Heap? Like, I got a gap here. What I'm is Googling that? it now. 1972. Okay, so you have to watch this. Do you already turned us on to Watermelon Man and Spook Who yeah, Sat by the Door and shit? So really, I hate to make you our seen, token conduit into this shit, but uh, you've never seen a movie like Top of the Heap, dude. Like, that's all I can say. Like, when okay. you watch it, you're like, I don't. This is like that's like what I said. The ninth configuration is like that's the closest I can get to like anything about it. So it's it's directed by Christopher St. John, right? And Christopher St. John. He was an actor. Um, he also, again, it's another one of these written, 
directed, starring this black actor. Like, you know what I mean? Um, and it's just this fucking, like, it's a, I get, here's the fucking, let me read the, uh, the synopsis, because even the synopsis isn't really going to do this film justice. But a Washington, D.C. cop is proud to be one of the few African-Americans on the force. He is not well loved by his peers or by people. Trouble erupts when he is overlooked for a promotion. Now, basically, you know, this whole film is just like you're witnessing this guy kind of like, again, like I've heard it be described as like his psyche is like kind of like um, an open revolt. You know what I mean? Like him being black, him being a cop, him being in an era. But like this is all this sort of just it's just you just have to watch it because I would describe it to you. But it's like. I would just like just go in just as knowing that. Uh, we'll definitely put that in the hopper on our yeah. own. I just Shit. we've been doing that thing again where we challenge each other mm-hmm. essentially, or we each bring a movie and we now it's only an hour because we're doing hard out instead of our fucking three hour long podcast. <laughs> but uh, we still do the double feature things, and one of us will definitely throw that in. Um, and feel free to come by anytime if we watch it, if you want to bullshit about it or yeah, whatever. Definitely any movie if we throw Dom's. Don's Plum in the mix or some shit. You want to come rail? Yeah, I've, I've already watched that fucking movie. Right. <laughs> well, that's what I'm saying, though. Just come by and speak on it, you know. Yeah, definitely. Trash it, whatever. I have a lot of thoughts on that movie. Exactly. <laughs> uh, I like that Don's Plum is like the movie, like, when they talk about, like, when people describe, like, and I hate this term, but when people describe toxic masculinity, yes. masculinity they describe Don's Plum, like, the whole <laughs> basically but those guys like, are teflon you know what i'm saying right, right right but like it's like it's almost like if they knew what that was and they were like trying to like do like way before like you're like let's 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 just oh they that. buried it dude that thing got yeah, yeah. real let's just be that like all the shit that they're describing let's just i'm try pretty sure it. leo like handled the wolf from or hired the wolf from pulp fiction to go collect every known copy of it and shit until it somehow hit the fucking internet one day <laughs> I'm pretty yeah, sure he had that shit removed and nuked. <laughs> I feel like, see, that's a point of pride for me because I think that's like the one movie I turned you on to. Yeah, I was like, like, what? what? <laughs> and I was like, oh, oh they had the the, the, the fucking, uh, what do you call it? The, the pussy, the pussy posse. The pussy movie. posse. <laughs> I was like, well, okay, okay. Toby Maguire and the pussy posse. <laughs> Let's make a movie of that. Let's make a movie called The Pussy Posse. It's about Don's Plum, the making of it. Cast nice. it with all these little star dudes. It'd be amazing. Yeah, it was like it was like it sort of kind of reminded me of Entourage, but like mm-hmm. uh, better. But like, but, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it sort of kind of reminded me of Entourage a little bit. I'm like, this is what Entourage should have been. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it should have been Entourage. Could have been raw, dude. Mm-hmm. Entourage was made for chicks. Yeah, I mean Entourage. I mean, well, I don't know. I think Entourage was. You think it was made for chicks? I think it was made for like bros you know what I'm saying? like all the guys that really love it are like bros like bros like you know like they're like yeah but i oh, feel like it always like, it always it? leans into salvaging right. the relationship at the end you know what i mean like i don't know maybe yeah. i didn't see enough of it but uh but there's a lot of like women woman like just you know women womanizing and just kind of like uh, mm-hmm. you know so i was like it's just a very bro show which i which think what sense. i mean is it was a bro show that they wrote to also try to appeal to women with. Yeah, that it was like, more relationship know, centric. Know, right, but do you know any women fans of Entourage? I don't really know who. <laughs> I mean, I know a couple fans like, or not. I, I know uh, of yeah. none. I don't like. You know. I, I knew a couple back in the day who said they liked. Well, it, but, well. regardless of, of gender, I guess you could say that it didn't have enough. Um, mm-hmm. In my opinion, enough like dirt. You know, enough like edge. You know, like it, it could have really gotten kind of darker i guess I'll yeah say. yeah i feel like if you're gonna do a show about hollywood yeah that's kind of what i'm getting at exactly yeah. it felt like they defanged it and shit mm-hmm. you know yeah and you gotta go like uh starry eyes <laughs> yeah you've seen that no you guys haven't seen, seen starry oh, eyes? go starry I, I i misunderstood no i haven't seen it okay so starry eyes is a horror film bro you gotta oh, watch this fucking movie um, is this some casting couch horror shit or something? It, is, it, it, it dude, again, I, it's one of those movies, again, like if I tell you, it kind of like defeats the, it, it takes away from the movie. It's so like it's, a Hollywood horror movie that, like, yeah, yeah, Hollywood. which is 2014. Okay. Um, love it. There should be more of those. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It go, like it goes, Star 80 and shit like that. I love that kind of, or yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, autofocus. It's, it's about a, yeah, basically a, a young Hollywood actress who's like, you know, she's trying to like, make it you know she's trying to achieve fame and fortune in the business and get big right and then she just kind of like 
this go- she enters this kind of world of Hollywood elites, and it just goes dark. Like yes. it's a horror okay. film, but then it's a horror. Yeah, film. good. Like, but it, but Sounds it, intriguing. Yeah, totally. Yeah. So she enters eyed wide shut territory. Okay. And, and then it just it, then it gets weird. There's a girl twenty seven kind of There's shit. A little bit of body horror shit in there too. Oh, nice. Too. Good, yeah. good. Yeah. Oh, Talk speaking of body language. horror, what do you think of Possessor? I love Possessor. Possessor was one of my favorite films of twenty twenty. Yeah. That was my was it my last pick for our I think so. prior? Yeah, I think it was my last one. Yeah. And what did you yeah, pick? Those, those oh, uh, Death the Smoochie. <laughs> no, that <laughs> was a different. Oh, that was a different one. I don't know, man. There's some, I don't know. I can't remember shit. Keeping track of all these podcasts and all the movies we haven't seen, like you were mentioning shit that uh, Michael Virus dude, I think threw a couple movies out that we hadn't seen. I'm like, damn. I know my list just keeps growing. Girl, uh, yeah. Pretty conventional and whatever the Hollywood teat was, but I know I branched off into pretty indie film, but there's just huge gaps with genre shit, especially. I mean, there's so many crazy. It's hard to keep up. 70s, you know, when you think of the Tarantinos and even yourself with who just really dug back into the fucking annals of history with these kind of films that have been forgotten. I mean, there's some great shit in there. They're all janky and shit, but uh, that's the beauty of it, too, like we say, you know. Yeah, I love, I love, I actually get, I have more fun finding like oddities and weird exactly. shit, like yeah. little off the, even newer films. Like if I can find a new film, like there's a film uh, that just got released recently that like no one's really talking about. That was fucking really good, dude. Uh, it's, called, it's called, it's called Don't Tell a Soul. And it has Rain Sounds Wilson familiar. in it. it oh, Rain Wilson. Out. Yeah, I saw a trailer yeah. for that. Oh, yeah. So, like, yeah, so, I dude, did too, yeah. So like, the cool thing about this fucking movie is the twist and like like the like the way it keeps turning in like the final act it keeps turning like and it's nice. turning in ways you're like oh oh the, oh 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 because at first you're that's like that's tough right, to pull man. off too that's good yeah mm-hmm. like Wayne Wilson is in this fucking hole and these kids are not, are not like because they got, he caught him robbing the house right and, and like these they're two brothers and then like he chases them he's in his like security guard outfit and he falls down a fucking well. And they know he's in the well, but the older brother's like, we just stole this money. We're, you can't, and the, mm. the younger brother's like the one with a good conscience. He's like, no, like, we got to help him, you know. So he's like giving him water. And he's telling him, like, leave him there. You can't fucking take him out. He's going to fucking, you know, t- yeah. give it to the cops. And then you're like, okay, boom. But then once it gets into that second, third, you're like, it starts changing. Like, it sure. starts, like, Very the cool. twists start coming. You're like, oh, so he's going to do this. And then, oh, he's, what, what, what oh, oh, like. And it was like it was like a well, this is a good plot thriller. You know what I'm saying? A good, nice. a, a which well you don't see too much of anymore, man. Just a good yeah, yeah. twisty thriller. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I was. I just watched Blood Simple, Simple recently again, and it, it's uh yeah. in that kind of vein. It sounds similar. Simple yeah, Plan, yeah, yeah. love that kind yeah. of shit. Mm-hmm, yes. Simple Plan is a bomb. Um, they didn't do anything in that where they like shot it from the well and shit the whole time or anything it was moving no, no, around no, 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 no. yeah this, it's ba- it more it mostly follows the protagonist is the younger brother mm-hmm. and the older brother's a dick their mom is like mina Savari, you know the chick from yeah, yeah. american yeah. beauty yeah honestly yeah but like she's like an old she's like their mom and she's like sickly and shit which is kind of weird to see her in that kind of role yeah, <laughs> but, interesting. but uh that's... yeah and 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 that is basically but the brother's just a real piece of shit. So, like, you know, he's the one that's sort of kind of like the antagonist. I love that. that. Just a good heavy brother. Like, mm-hmm. those movies like Mean Creek, where there's always, yeah, like, the yeah. one kid who's like, like, we gotta kill this one. motherfucker. And but again, yeah. once it River's gets Edge. To, yeah, but once it gets to that third act, all kind of starts changing. It just starts <laughs> changing, changing, changing. So, yeah. All right, man. Definitely Let's check that out. Yeah. When you watch shit like Chameleon Street... Do you just think to yourself, like, man, when am I going to make a movie? Just a little. Oh, I have to now because I I set a goal for myself um, when I first started screenwriting. Like, so I started in 2009. That's when I decided I'm going to stop trying to make movies altogether and just focus on writing. I've told this story many times, but like, I was like, this is the one thing I can do where I don't have to worry about, like, you know, assembling crew, raising money, all the logistics, all all the logistics. I don't need any permission to just sit down. I don't have to ask it permission to sit down and write. Right. Right. And plus right. writing was the thing that I could always do. And it was mm-hmm. like one of the things that I found out was like, Oh yeah. Like I know how to do this. I always have. And like, I'm always the one ended up doing it when I, we're doing these projects. I'm always the one who ends up fucking writing the whole fucking thing. Mm-hmm. So like, um, 
boom. So that's when that started happening. And I, it's very, within like a year and change, I got a manager in LA and then all this shit started happening. So I just was like, all right, boom. but I made a promise to myself. And I was like, yo, I will try if, if, if I keep, I'm just going to let this go for a while. But before I turn 40, like I want to have a film. So I'm like, I just turned 39. So I, I have to, yeah, get to <laughs> put it. up or shut up now. Yeah. So it's like, I don't really have any, I'm like, cause I made that promise back in 09. I was so are like, you just trying to think now of tiny little films you can make on your own? Yeah, pretty much. I mean, I'm right. I'm in the process of writing. Like I said, at first I got to fucking finish this one thing that I've been working on forever. I know Scott Milam's probably waiting for the script forever, but like, but like, shout um, out to I, Scott Milam. Yeah, awesome yeah. dude. Uh, I'm, I, I made myself promise like, okay, I'm, I'm going to finish that. Then the next thing is 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 this thing that I'm gonna make, and I'm definitely trying to do it. Uh, something that's very um, very shootable. Like shout out to uh, Matthias because Matthias Caruso uh, has this script called Shell Game, and like um, it's a dope fucking script, right? But when I read it, I was like, "Fuck you," uh, because it was like you came up with this great concept. Mm-hmm. That like Envious. it's so easy to fucking shoot, mm. and he was like, "Damn it!" You know how you read something, you're like, "God damn, why do you beat me to this?" Right? Mm-hmm. So like, I like so I refer to that as like an inspiration of like, "Oh, you can do something small scale." And obviously, Definitely. you guys just made something small scale too. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, yeah, know, we don't need to talk about yet. that. <laughs> so like, I see. I see you guys make Cax, I see you guys make Cactus Jack. I see that fucking script, even though I know he's not going to direct it, but whatever. But I'm like, those are the type of things where I'm like, okay, you can do stuff on a small scale mm-hmm. that's cool and like actually effective and can make. Yeah, there's a million stories you can you tell. With the, so there's like the minimum that's, the, that's the goal. The goal is to make to write something that's like achievable but still cool. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It doesn't really kind of like. uh require uh, like a hundred million fucking dollars that's our whole thing man it's like what's the smallest shit i could do even now everyone's like man it'd be cool if because you guys pull that off with 25 grand or whatever if somebody's like i wonder what they do with a million or something i'm like dude i'll keep making little fucking fifty thousand dollar movies well, I mean, just pocket I, the million. You can, yeah, but you can scale up. I mean, like, shit, that's what Adam Winger, look at, look at him. Yeah. Like, yeah, but I'm just saying, we have no desire to be making like King Kong versus Godzilla. Right, but like, shit, I don't man. think he started out. Hey, speak for yourself. Man. Like, you know what I'm saying? This is like that. <laughs> making small films, <laughs> this dude was making small ass films and now he's on this giant ass fucking, you know? Yeah, yeah. And it's like, I don't even think he, I, I'll be honest with well, you. Well, I mean, the money they threw at him, I'm sure he's like, yeah. shit. This yeah, is like, right. the one I could ride off into the sunset on and just make what I right. want after this. But. Right. I think him and Simon Barrett got the face off movie next, too, right? The face off sequel or some shit. But I'm saying, like, those guys didn't start out like, like I'm going to do huge fucking movies. They were just mm-hmm, doing right. small shit. And even then, like, the I'm not, I don't Brothers necessarily want to yeah. make small movies. Like, I mean, I don't want to make big movies. Right. I want to make just movies. You know what I mean? But yeah. I definitely don't want to make. Um, big giant ass. Like I have no. Like I said, fuck I don't, CGI. Like, I don't want any CGI shit. in my yeah, shit. Yeah, I don't want to make Michael Bay shit. I don't want to make Disney yep. type. You know, Marvel movies and all that shit. Like to me, that's not even like. Those that's are all done by committee, really. Anyway, right? Now. Those are paycheck movies. You know what I'm saying? You're yeah. making those movies for paycheck. You're not like you're not really. You know, you're not an auteur making those films, bro. Like, nah. You know, like e- even though I can say, okay, yes, that fucking Thor movie that fucking uh uh uh, uh homie did. That Taika, Taika did. Okay, Taika, it does. Yes. Okay, I, can Ragnarok. Tell, I can tell. Yeah, I can tell. Yeah, that was good. Yeah, I can tell it's his imprint. Okay? His, okay, can, yeah, yeah. I can tell Same with Guardians Black, of the Galaxy with Gunn and shit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I can tell Shane Black Iron Man 3 is a Shane Black fucking movie. Like, you know what I mean? So I right. get it. You can do that, but I Coogler. feel like. Yeah. yeah, Coogler with Black Panther to a certain degree, but I feel like Coogler kind of like. I think he kind of like Killmonger felt like. Coogler, you know what I mean? Like that felt That's like his contribution. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, and it's just like, well, yeah, once you get past that, it's like two big battle scenes, like Avatar, yeah. like exhaustive, mm-hmm. yeah. fucking. Yeah. Who cares? Yo, Avatar. Punching. Avatar kind of, kind of, uh, kind of is a good fucking movie. Um, I gotta watch it, it again for our Alien and Smackdown. Because well, I, I was yeah. like, yeah, fuck Avatar, but like I watched it again. I'm like, nah, James Cameron's shit. Like, he proved, he proved it over and over again. Like, you know what I mean? Like, but one like, thing, I just remember being exhausted because it has like yeah, two climaxes, the two big yeah. battles. I was like, ugh, just. Yeah, I felt that same way. But then I returned to it and I was like, yo, this shit kind of holds up. And it's and it's like politics I was fucking with. I was like, yo, yeah, the mining, like, strip mining. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Like, Indigenous people. And, yeah. and then when you see like other stuff, like when you watch like the big shit that they're making now, it's like, 
you like and you could contrast it with Avatar and you realize like how much more like elegant of a storyteller mm. he like he is compared in comparison to like the shit that they're making now. I'm like, oh yeah, like I got I'd, I'd take this shit over that shit. I mean he is an auteur. So yeah. it's not yeah. like Actually, speaking of the auteur shit, I don't know how much time we got left, but uh, I remember seeing one of the clubhouse things pop up. You were talking about there's no auteurs in TV. The thing is auteur TV. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I yeah, it is pretty like much committee driven too these right, days. Right, but it's yeah. like people people would get like this idea that like it's like auteurs. Like first of all, you have a writers room with twelve writers. Mm-hmm. Second of all, mm-hmm. every every other episode is a new director. How the fuck is yeah. that auteur? It's not. You the closest be, uh, thing might be like True Detective season one, right. but it still no, no, wasn't the same guy writing and right. directing. Here's the, here's the thing: there is auteur TV, but it's a cheat. So, mm-hmm. like, too old to die young is Nicholas Winding Refn. That's auteur, but he cheated. He made like five movies in a short, right? Or whatever. Right. However, I mean, like, he made like every every episode was like two and a half hours, and then like the last one was like a fifteen minute movie or some mm-hmm. shit. Like, he mm-hmm. just made a whole bunch of movies that he wrote and directed. Like, you know, so it's like he cheated. He really didn't. How, make how's it. that a cheat? Do you mean? Exactly. Because he, he like, saw that he could make a series, right? And it's, he was uh-huh. like, all right, well, I'm going to do this for Amazon. But guess what? I'm just going to do it. I'm just going to make movies. But you I'm mean, not, really yeah, not in the series. sense of having a writer's room and all yeah, that yeah, stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm just going to I'm gonna have a writer that I sit down and write with, and we'll write it. But we're writing whole scripts. These, these are two and a half hours. Like, these are like two-hour movies. So yeah. he's like, I'm just going to make a series of films. I'm not making, like, yeah, they all are related, but I'm not making a series. Like, we're not, we're not having, like, one-hour series. Mm-hmm that all serialized we we go to the whiteboard and break mm-hmm. story and then have multiple directors no he directed all of them and they shot them and they're all feature length it's like it's it's like a cheat like so it's yeah. like i don't even consider it like television I feel, I feel like it's just like okay he made it but it's like he made a bunch of movies where pizzolato supposedly wrote every episode and that mm-hmm. terry fukunaga dude or whatever directed every episode but then there, but there you go. But like, if, if Pizzolatto's not directing, then exactly. how the fuck is he auteur? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah. So that's definition. true. That by definition, the word auteur, yeah, baby. Yeah, there's yeah, yeah. elements. You know, like it, the HBO shows, like Sopranos and The Wire and stuff, that had an element of auteurness to it, just because and the I, creator I had love, such a heavy hand. Dead one. I love. Yeah. Like, I, yeah, I love. Yeah. I love. I love, yeah. I love TV, but like, it's not film. Yeah, you, know, no you can't achieve that something. intimacy between the creator and the work that Tarantino's yeah, yeah, talking yeah. about dabbling in TV forever. I feel like when he goes to do it, it's going to be maybe yes. the first we'll see of all tour shit. It'll be, it'll be like him. that. I feel it'll be just like what, uh, uh, what do you call it? NWR did, which is just kind of, I'm going to make a bunch of movies. Fuck y'all. You know what I mean? Or, or, or he'll do like a, uh, what do you Which call it? Which is fine like, too, though. What's the definition of TV? Period. Does it have to be 60 right. minutes or half an yeah. hour? You know, it's like. But like, like, but it's you know, all like somewhat Chris is saying though, like TV, TV, like film is a collaborative medium for sure, right? It's a whole bunch of people making a film, but yeah, TV sure. is, but TV <laughs> is truly art by committee in a way that yeah, film, absolutely, even more than film. You know what yes. I mean? So like, and I feel like because film has because TV has become like you know, the bigger kind of like, uh, it has a bigger cultural kind of relevance now than yes, films, yeah. you know, cause it used to be the other way. So people don't yeah. give a shit about movies. It's right. So, 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 so yeah. now that people view, view TV as the elevated medium, right? Like people now think that they're going to break into the industry and be like these fucking like all tour television. Like even people, when they talk about TV, like whether it be on like clubhouse or anywhere, they'll be talking about like their shit. They confuse it. They'll be like, They'll confuse TV and film. They'll be like thinking well, they're going to you know, direct every episode and write every. Right. They'll be like, we're, or they'll be talking about a show, and they'll be like, "Well, this is one of my favorite films." I'm like, "That's a show, it's not a film." Oh yeah, yeah. Like, or, or they'll be like, or they'll talk about a film, or they'll talk about a film, and they'll be like, "What, what, what the filmmaker needed is a writer's room." I'm like, "That's not how mm. this works." Like you know what I'm saying? Like people don't even know. Yeah, that's what, people who just don't even. Yeah, it's like they blur the, the lines works. completely, and I'm like, I'm like, if you think that you're going to break into this industry. On television, I'm like, uh, that's not. No, it's the not, most success we've had the last couple of years is selling pitches and optioning shows. Right, and no, shit. you'll get a job, and you'll. But we won't. Yeah, that was our thing, a, though. We were like, right, right. What's the possibility of us writing every episode of this shit? Because I don't think I want anything to do with a writer's room, especially the climates nowadays, the way yeah. they are. You know me, my personality. If you want to work, listen. If you want to work, if you want to work and to make a name for yourself in the industry for television, you, you can do that for sure. When people keep thinking they're going to have like this big splash and they're going to be like Tarantino or some shit, mm-hmm. like yeah, because the they're prestige, on TV, like, right? It's yeah, like it doesn't work like that. Even the, right? Even the like even the people who have those big names, like big name recognition, like you can look. They're very specific cases. So like 
take somebody Favreau like Favreau with Mandalorian and stuff. You know, well, it's like, right, like a Vince he, Gilligan now. He made his name in TV, right? Yeah. But it, it, it's Kurt like Suter. it's like one of those things where like you have to be like the show has to be one really fucking good, mm-hmm. right? And then your name has to be you have to be marketed like. And even those guys, like most people, if they saw Vince Gilligan in public, they did they wouldn't know. Yeah, who the fuck it was. wasn't marketed off being which right. His work. The you know, they, he got the recognition it. as a result of the right. The, if you uh, saw Matthew you know, Weiner right now, you wouldn't know who he was. Right. Like that's the creator of Mad Men. Like you wouldn't know him. Like you'd be like, who the fuck is this guy yeah. talking? Which to is right beautiful. Now? I know that was the thing we liked most about it. Yes. The anonymity. Right, right. You exactly. have the level of anonymity. <laughs> now the only people that have that kind of recognition from television are the like, people who like star in the show too, like Lena Dunham because she's in the fucking show, mm-hmm, right. or even mm-hmm. Issa Rae because she's in the show. You know what I mean? People think they're going to be like them though. Like that's how they're going to do. Like I'm going to create a show and I'm going to be like that. I'm like, no, you're mm-hmm. not. You're going to be. If you get in, Larry you're David, right. right? But nobody can know who you are. You could still make a lot of money, you know, if you become a Louis, show mostly comedies. Yeah. Louis, yeah, one Louis. of the uh, Louis all tour TV. Yes. Well, yeah. There you go. That's as Shot close as you'll get. Was, That's as close I mean, as you'll get. <laughs> I know he wrote, edited, and starred, and like you know. So if you want to make a case, you could probably make a case for Louis. Yeah, yeah you could probably make a case for Louis. But I mean, he's the closest, most, which is awesome. I mean, yeah. he's the guy. Of all guys. <laughs> But for the most part, yeah, it's not like that. And I'm, I still feel like film is better. <laughs> like, I do, in my opinion, I just feel It like breaks my heart better. that film is kind of disappearing. And film, though, doesn't it. need to be exactly what I it is it either. I love it because what's going to happen is, again, like, all the motherfucking, all the, all the, all the striver climber career motherfuckers will go yeah, to TV. They'll go to TV. They the be. real auteurs. Take your ass over there. Artists. And all the real interesting motherfuckers yeah. will stay in film or will start filming. They'll just make cool films. Mm-hmm. Like, stay, go, go over there. That's part there. of the reason we made Cactus Jack, too, was to get out of this right. TV shit too, because again, we knew it was just going to end up with <laughs> just TV dealing is with fucking lame. <laughs> Dude, yeah, it is. The like, whole... like it is fucking lame. Like, let me tell you the like, ecosystem have... of it. Like, uh-uh, yeah, the, the whole ecosystem of it is fucking lame. At least to me, like, I'm not trying to Dude, shit, who like, you preaching to. Right. It's fucking lame. Like I don't have any desire. Like I watch TV. I'll watch a cool show every day, but I, I yeah. really don't get excited about making a show. Like, I just don't. I do like, a bit I, because I like the long form. I like following characters as they evolve over a long if, period if I of can, time and stuff. But Well, Chris, if I could make a show it. like, yeah, if I could make a show like, <laughs> I don't appeal. know, like there's, there's shows World I think, building. yeah, there's shows I think of where I'm like, if I could have a scenario like that, then cool. Like, like when they made Spaced, right, with fucking Edgar Wright and Simon Peck, like if you could have a scenario like that, first of all, the way that the way the British make TV is so much better anyways, because they don't like, they don't, you don't do 30 million fucking episodes. You do right, like six, right. Five. You have time to make good, bad, good shit Great. because you don't have. You're not doing thirty out, thirty fucking hour long episodes. You know what I mean? They, the mm-hmm. way they make shows, it's so much more conducive to making quality, even though it's not quantity. It's more, you know what I mean? It's not necessarily. Yeah. You don't have as many episodes. You don't have as many seasons. But I would trade that if I could have a show that's good, like a Luther. You know what I'm saying? That's like a, just a better show. Mm-hmm. Than like a show that goes on thirteen seasons and has fucking a million fucking episodes that they got to, and it's this big giant machine, right? Like you got to all these fucking moving parts. The other but thing, like is- again, it ha- would have to be intimate. Like it would have to like why I pointed to space is because space has this kind of like intimate feel. Like you can tell like they're ha- like the people making it are intimately involved. They're making decisions. They're shooting it the way they want to. You know, clearly it's directed by Edgar. You know what I'm saying? With and, and it's clearly written by Simon. You know what I'm saying? Simon if Craig. I were to try and make a TV show nowadays, it would almost be the same kind of shit we tried to do with Cactus Jack. They're like that hotel room, whatever the fuck it is the Duplass brothers did. Or remember In Treatment? Yes, In Treatment. Like a show like that where it's like just two talking heads in a room for 30 minutes. Yeah. Boom. You know, can you pull that kind of shit off? You know, I don't know. That was the Gabriel. Uh, yeah, or it's just right? a shrink yeah. or whatever. Yeah. 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 yeah, I love that. Yeah, that did charm me that's the thing can can i think of some super some shit where you don't need all these people honestly right but Mm -hmm. then again like i keep referring to like because again i only like like there's only so many shows that make that like i'll watch and like i wish i could make that Mm -hmm. you know what i mean Mm -hmm. like again like if it's like some weird shit like you know some david lynch type twin peaks weird shit like i said space is like i said because you got again it just feels like people made it jessica steven simon peg it just feels like they made it mm-hmm, like mm-hmm. it doesn't feel like it was 107 motherfuckers it felt like those right. two jessica yeah. steven simon peg and edgar wright that's same it. with like, deadwood and sopranos yeah, all those shows they yeah, have yeah, yeah. carnival uh, you know the wire 
you could feel the David Simons yes. all up in yeah, there. Yeah, but the, with The Wire, though, like, he had he had a murderer's role of, like, crime novelists. There, there. For sure. Like, he had Ed Burns, yeah, and he had all these yeah. consultants and shit. But, uh, yeah. yeah but, but, I mean, that's, that's just the magnitude yeah, of the show, Richard, though. Richard yeah. Price was one of the fucking writers on there. Fucking, yes. uh... Who else was it? There's a whole. There was a whole bunch of like just novelists on that show. Like, that well, see, that's a different thing too, though. He yeah. still yeah. kind of ran it in around their uh, normal bullshit of a writer's room, et cetera. Let me get a bunch of novelists. Let me get a bunch of dudes who are just he knew were on the level and shit. Once you get to that position, sure, too, you could do that. Like guys like us, if any of us you're looking for authenticity show, in a certain world, well, we yeah. probably wouldn't even have saying who the fuck ended up in your writer's room. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, the that's scary true. part. Imagine just getting handed kind of this group of people. Ugh. people like, yeah, you're like, oh, fuck, yeah. And then, you and then they're all them. complaining. Remember? Well, you, you're not in the WGA yet, right? Are you? No, 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 no. Yeah. I'm about to go fucking FICOR like Ridley and shit. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <I'm> so, <laughs> no, I'm a pro union guy, but like. So the yeah. WGA is a weird thing, though. We've said this before. It's like a they bunch of freelancers. In cases, though. Yeah, oh, they're amazing. I, I love my problem. Game, but... My problem would be I couldn't afford to keep the dues up. Like I don't think a, I could. That's... We're in arrears. I say it all the time. We're in arrears, yeah, man. Okay, like I mean, like I can afford it for a little bit, but... right? <laughs> but then now I start to look at that money, and I'm like, uh, yeah, I'm not gonna be able to make this. this well, especially when there's two of us, yeah. we right, got to make yeah. double to get health care and shit, and then health care yeah. lapses after. You. I swear to God, if we got universal health care, half the unions battle with the studios would be gone. Yeah, because that's it. That's the care they always dangle health care and shit. If you got rid of that shit anyway i don't even know what the fuck i was getting at with this but uh oh just i remember being in one of those wga groups on facebook of all wga writers and shit and it was just such a glimpse into what it would be like having a writer's room i mean every day it was just flame wars about political correctness shit and how people said things and fucking it was all i couldn't imagine a, more of a hellscape than trying to tell this story and dealing with all that shit to tell my story. Get the fuck out of here. Yeah, I mean, again, and and just knowing some of the people, again, like, uh, I'm definitely pro-union, but there are some fucking assholes who are... Yeah, who, there's corruption are, in every large organization right, like that, just and just, like, fuck-ups and assholes. Like, if they, if, again, I'm all for, I'm all for yeah. writers being in solidarity, for sure, for sure. But, like, yeah, there are some same. fucking... There are some members of the... Like, in terms of, like, the uh, leadership... In the WGA, some mm-hmm. of those people are just, I'm like, screenwriter guys who I'm like, that person's a fucking asshole. Yeah, like, you, you know, know some of like, them personally. That's well, what's I know crazy some about of them personally. Yeah, I'm exactly. like, yeah, that, that, that motherfucker who's like a cat, like, he's a fucking asshole. Like, you know what I'm saying? I would hate to have to come to him with any kind of problem. Right. And of course, opinion. those are the cats that want to be in right. leadership positions and shit. Right, so right, right. Like, right. So, so you, can, you know, it is what it is, you know. But, end up yeah. more like Todd Phillips and shit. And if you start directing your own shit, then go with the DGA, I guess, if any of them. You know, because t- Todd Phillips, he got in all that hot water talking about <clears throat> fuck the guild, fuck minimums. It's my agent's job to get me the most money, and it's my job to put myself in a position. But you know, he's a libertarian type. You know, um, yeah, yeah. So probably anti-union in general. I don't know. I'm not going to speak for the dude, but yeah. there's still some merit to way. what he said, though. You know what I mean? It's like yeah. it is a weird kind of union. It's not like yeah. a bunch of dock workers or teamsters who can. No, you know, it's, it's not. It's, it's 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 like a lot of like kind of like booze. It's like hitman. It's like if it was a bunch of hitmen <laughs> and they all get their own right. freelance jobs and none of them they're competing for jobs. That's the one thing in a union. Right. You're not competing, you're not all, competing all the time each for other, right? scant jobs. That's what's weird about it. So anyway. Yeah. I don't know how much time we have left, but I don't know. I Chameleon figured Street. I yeah, we didn't talk about Community Street nearly enough, but, I feel Would like, it but. be your Desert Island movie if you were stuck on a des- it being your favorite movie, or what would you it's pick between, if you were it's stuck between on that a or, or Hollywood Shuffle? Hollywood Shuffle, <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah. And I fucking yeah. love Hollywood Shuffle. Hollywood yeah. Shuffle I would watch that again, too. I haven't seen it in a long time. It's awesome, though. He financed it on his own credit cards. Yeah. No one was giving him money. Same thing with, you know, I don't know how exactly Wendell B. Harris Jr. or whatever raised the money for this shit, but... uh I imagine it was probably something similar. Well, I think at one point I was watching a making of thing and they said, there's an executive producer. It was his mom, I think. It was an old mm. black lady. Her last name was Harris. It's yeah. some relative, I imagine. So it, it just sucks that 
Townsend obviously went on and had success in Hollywood, but not yeah. making have movies. Seen, have you seen the fucking five, making the five heartbeats documentary? Something no. Fantastic, bro. Fantastic. Is it? Check that out. Because okay. he, what he does, he does, he, he narrates the whole thing. Right. But it, he goes through the whole process. Like from when they started the ideas, conception, them writing the script, him and Keenan, initially who they had cast, the, the studio rejecting draft, then getting oh, the green light. Shit. You're alone, right? Yeah, yeah. Is it cool if I start filming now? No, what do we get inside? Why are you here? I just thought it was really interesting, you know, that someone hasn't left their basement in six months, not even to use the bathroom. Is that true? Why would I want to go out there? I got everything I need right here. That's what's wrong with most people. They're weak-willed pussies and parasites buy into that whole it takes a village bullshit you know how many aliases i've used calling into radio shows i've had it up to my goddamn gills with the systematic feminization of this country did your old damn show if you think you got that much to say yeah you live in your mom's basement fuck you what's so special about my loser son you really do hate your own mother she's a woman why wouldn't I? You know, there's some disconnect there, and, and if I could find it, what is hate? Where does it come from? Where does it go? You want to know what gender you are? Reach down the front of your fucking pants and shoot fucking kite. Black lives matter. Do you call horses slaves? Liberal fucktard. Enough with the parades and the rainbow flags. Dude, this guy's it's like pure hate, man. I want to see something really fucking cool. This guy is a fucking animal. He's got himself on a leash. He's itching to get off that fucking leash. And he's gonna fucking kill some people. What a fucking show. No, stop, man, stop! What are we here? Look at me! Look at me! You're gonna help me show him the light. We're gonna change the world. This is Cactus Jack coming to you live from a studio audience. To the man who calls himself Cactus Jack, we have watched as you have rocketed to infamy. And you wonder why these cornered animals lash out. Hit the fucking side. And now, we have watched as you have called for literal blood. I know you're out there listening. It's buzzing in your ears, burrowing into your brain. Do it, Jack. You're gonna love this. I pulled that trigger on that motherfucker's head. Your VPN will not shield you. The dark net will not hide you. You and your kind are finished. You think I'm scared of you? Come and fucking get me!